crazy if I didn't hold your hand Cause no matter where I go, I never ever, ever go without you I just couldn't do it, no I wouldn't get through it Trying to rock without you's like an engine with no fluid I crash and I burn and I die without The show where we feature phenomenal women, a show where you will be motivated, inspired, and informed. And today I am so super excited to have with me in the studio someone who is very, very special to me, very near and dear to me, the phenomenal, the amazing Dr. Susie Owens, co-pastor of the Greater Mount Calvary Holy Church and the International First Lady of, of Mount Calvary Church of America. Uh, just uh, by way of introduction, for some who may not be familiar with Dr. Owens, I want to share a little bit with you about her. She is a native Texan and a product of the Boston Public School System, a graduate of Bethel Bible Institute, where she earned an Associate of Arts degree in New Testament Studies in 1970. And she's also a graduate of Howard University School of Divinity. Woohoo for Howard. And most recently, she achieved her doctoral degree in African American leadership from the renowned Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena, California. Uh, Dr. Owens has preached on many platforms, both in the United States as well as abroad. Her unique presentation of the gospel has enabled her to minister to many denominations, organizations, and institutions. And as a result, she is a much sought after preacher, teacher, leader, coach, and counselor. She is the wife of my bishop and my pastor, Archbishop Alfred Owens Jr. And they both pastor together, Greater Mount Calvary Holy Church in Washington, DC a progressive inner city church with an adult membership of more than 7,000. Most notably, she is the mother of two, Alfred Thomas and Crystal Monique, and the grandmother of seven grandsons. Oh, my goodness. Uh, she enjoys the theater and reading, and she's also the author of Unless to Agree, Memorable Moments, and her most recent offering soaring above the ceiling it's it's without further ado that we welcome to the nicole mason show dr Susie c owens <laughs> hey co-pastor hey girlfriend <laughs> how 
Happy New Year to you. Same to you. What a pleasure. And I am so delighted to be with you this afternoon. Well, I am so excited that you were able to make it. Now, when it's, when I woke up and snow was on the ground, I said, now, wait a minute. We've got to get this snow removed. <laughs> yes. So I'm excited that the sun has come out and you're able to share with us and share with our audience today. And there's so much that I want to talk about because you are just so well versed as it relates to women in ministry, as it relates to uh, women balancing so many different things that they have to balance. So I, I want to start with the balancing. Okay, let's start with the balancing. I want to start with the balancing. And, you know, over the years, you have imparted so much into my life personally. Um, but when I was coming to the preaching women seminars that mm -hmm. you had at the church, um, one of the things I know that you talked extensively about was, you know, the balance between your vocation and trying to balance it all. But the thing that I love is that you talk about it as a, from an individual perspective that one thing is not going to fit everybody. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. Um, I think when, when women talk about balance and we see what other women do, we think that we can automatically fit in that particular mode mm -hmm. or we can fit in that particular category. Mm -hmm. But really, we have to look at your entire life mm -hmm. and then begin to build a platform that's comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. And so what's comfortable for me may not be comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about different seasons in women's lives. If our children are small, mm -hmm. if our businesses are just beginning, or if we are employed and our career is taking off, or we're in school, we're looking for scholarships mm -hmm. and all those kinds of things, then we have to add the, all of those components to how we begin to balance. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't look the same for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the errors we make as women in trying to balance and keep everything going, keep everybody alive. Right. You know, <laughs> yes. and not, not really go off on the deep end. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, you know, what what, 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 what Copasta does or what Elder Nicole does, then if I do it this way, it'll work for me. Mm -hmm. And that is not true. So what you have to do really, ladies, is begin to put all the ingredients of your life together. Mm -hmm. And just like building a wonderful cake or building a wonderful meal, each particular part plays its place in what you do mm -hmm. and how you achieve that wonderful presentation mm -hmm. of who you are. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some tidbits that we can share that might meet everybody, mm -hmm. but underneath, it's really who you are, what you bring to the table, and then family, career, and all those other components that will ultimately bring you into the full design of purpose that mm -hmm. God has for your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. And I know that that's one of the things that really kind of baffles a lot of women, just trying to figure it all out and how to... Um, schedule their time, schedule their lives. One of the things that you shared in one of our coaching sessions um, a few months back was how you schedule your time. You schedule, um, look at everything, you know, a week out and just plan. So talk a little bit about your planning and, you know, what has worked for you because somebody listening may say, okay, well, I, I like that approach or that system because mm -hmm. it's really a system that each person has to develop. But I liked that when you shared that. Yeah, you have to plan out. And so what, what I have learned that works for me that may work for some of the ladies who are watching us today and listening to us is that you have long-range goals. Mm -hmm. So you have plans that, that fit into longevity. Then you have current goals, mm -hmm. plans that fit into what it is you're trying to eventually evolve into or eventually accomplish. Those are your current goals and then you have past goals mm -hmm. so you take all of those components begin to shift them and mix them and mold them and come up with what a plan now for example if you have small children mm -hmm. and of course that means that they're going to have to have homework they're going to be involved in extracurricular activities at school mm -hmm. if you're in ministry then you have your church obligations mm -hmm. if you're if you're married then you have that that component of husband and spouse and partnership if you're single, then you have to have who's going to do this and who's going to do that. So you begin to formulate your goals around what that long-term mm -hmm. presentation you want. Mm -hmm. And I think so many times.
sometimes we look at it and say, okay, I need to do this right now because mm -hmm. right now is when I need to get this done. Mm -hmm. And technically, right now is an opportunity. We don't want to forfeit the opportunity, mm -hmm. but we do want the opportunity to mesh in with everything we're going to become. Mm -hmm. And so some things take time. So again, you look at those critical elements, mm -hmm. those things that maybe perhaps you only have one shot with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your children are going to be six years old only one time. That's good. They're going to be 13 only one mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So look at those kinds of elements in your life that you have one shot with. Mm -hmm. And you want to be sure that you put enough effort mm -hmm. and energy into those kinds of situations mm -hmm. that ultimately mm -hmm. will yield the results or the fruitfulness mm -hmm. that you want. Mm -hmm. If you're married and you're young in your marriage, and then there's a building process there as opposed to if you've been married a few years and you're getting into a second or third phase of your relationship with mm -hmm. your husband or your wife then there are some things you've already experienced mm -hmm. some things you've already accomplished already under your belt mm -hmm. so you can use those past mm -hmm. to help with current and then mm -hmm put you into line for future endeavors. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very critical that you keep those long range goals, look at currently what you're doing, and then look at past goals. And I can give you a perfect example. When um, I was getting ready to go to uh, school to work on my master's degrees, mm -hmm. my master's degree, I was 32. Mm -hmm. I'd already been accepted for Howard, had everything in place, going to school, discovered I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Try not to make that devastating news, you know. <laughs> that would be a negative, you know. Uh, and I had to work with that, and then I had to say, okay, am I going to go to school now, or am I going to relax, get through this pregnancy, and then give this child the same amount of attention and effort and energy that I gave my son. Well, by that time, my son was seven, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, he's pretty much settled. You know, he's mm -hmm. moved past those little tender years. I can get through this. Mm -hmm. And so I had to make a crucial decision. Mm -hmm. So I decided that my my, my child, uh, my daughter that was coming, was worth me postponing mm -hmm. some of those goals, some of those ambitions, some of those aims for a later date. Mm -hmm and spend that time with her because I had that one shot to help her develop, to help her come into herself. Mm -hmm. And so I landed up postponing it, didn't start working on my master's degree till Crystal was 13. Wow. Wow. Which means now I'm a, I'm a, I'm going into senior citizens phase, you know, <laughs> trying to write this 25 page paper, okay? But God gives grace, yes, you know, yes, and yes. all things do work together, <laughs> you know. So again, it's making those crucial decisions mm -hmm. that will really, really reveal and reap for you that kind of reward you want. Mm -hmm. And so again, sometimes it seems like we're postponing and it's never going to be, but I'm, I'm, I'm of the opinion that when we do what is proper to do first, mm -hmm. then those other opportunities, avenues and doors will open for us. That's good. Now I want to pick up on that. So talk about how you keep yourself focused and steady when everything in your mind seems to be postponed. Yeah. It's almost like, okay, well, I have to put my life on hold to make sure everybody else is okay. So how do you keep yourself focused and steady? Because you know you have a call. You know that you are supposed to be doing something great or grand, whatever mm -hmm. it is. But in the meantime, mm -hmm. so talk a little bit about that. Well, again, we, we because we're Christian and we're faith-based women and we do our lives and we do the activities in our lives based on biblical principles, mm -hmm. then we have to pull in those biblical principles that tie into our behavior and our actions mm -hmm. at that particular junction in our lives. Mm -hmm. So we have to believe that our gift will make room for us. Mm -hmm. We have to believe that God has destiny, that our steps are ordered, and that God can open up one opportunity, open up one door that will open up thousands of doors. Mm -hmm. So we must always remember that if we seem uh, seemingly it seems as if we're, we're we're doing everything for everybody and mm -hmm. nobody is giving us any gratification mm -hmm. that our gratification comes from the Lord mm -hmm. and then our gratification comes from the service that we give mm -hmm. remember the scripture that says charity begins at mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. so before we serve other women before we serve or process other 
coaching or other opportunities, we must first gather that love at mm-hmm. home. Mm-hmm. We don't want to be successful in other ventures mm-hmm. and then not successful in our home lives or lose our children mm-hmm. because we have looked into other avenues mm-hmm. that seemingly are once in a lifetime opportunities. Mm-hmm. And I've learned from the hand of God that what seems like a great opportunity now, God can make it a greater opportunity later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so again, it's looking at those crucial points and then saying this. And remember that when we do sacrifice, all mm-hmm. sacrifices are rewarded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the rewards may not come exactly when we want them or exactly the way that we want them. Mm -hmm. But he told his apostles, no one has forsaken mother, father, Mm -hmm. sister, Mm -hmm. or brother. Mm -hmm. We're in this life, houses Mm -hmm. or land. Mm -hmm. We're in this life, I have not returned. Mm -hmm. So we keep focus that the return is coming. Mm -hmm. And my key element there is everything in God's time. Mm Yeah. God's timing is impeccable. Yeah. That that's that's good stuff. And you know, I think that when we begin to move and flow in the things of God, one of the things that happens if you are too anxious, life will back you back up. Yeah, it will. Life will back you back up. You know, something will happen that causes your attention to be diverted to where it probably should have been in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, but God is in the mix of it all. And so I love that. I was watching um, the Word Network a couple of weeks ago, and someone said, you know, it's a sad thing to be a zero at church. No, you need to be a zero. No, it's, t- wait a minute, how did it go? It's a sad thing if you are a zero at home and a hero at church. Wow, that's powerful. And that's what I said. Yeah, that's powerful. <laughs> I that said, is so whoa. powerful. Yeah. Uh, and someone, and I posted it on Facebook, I tweeted it, and somebody just put, ouch. ouch. It was just like, ouch. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I really appreciate that. And so when we start to talk about you taking the time to um, raise Crystal, you know, um, being to make sure that she need, got everything that she needed, and then after that, going back for your doctorate. And, you know, I was just so super proud of you. Like a crazy person. <laughs> I was so super proud of you. I mean, and it reminded me when I was in law school, there was a gentleman there who was in his 70s mm-hmm. in my class mm-hmm. getting his law degree. Mm-hmm. And so I was just so super proud mm-hmm. um, to witness that, mm-hmm. that you took the time to um, go back to get your doctorate. So talk a little bit about that to some of the people who may be thinking, well, you know, I'm too old mm-hmm. to do it or mm-hmm. my time has passed. No. Yeah, no, 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 no. And again, it it's it's having those goals, having those aspirations that we keep in our hearts. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the Bible says that Mary hid some things in her heart, mm-hmm. you know. And so we hide those things in our hearts and we say, Okay, God, I wanna do this. Mm-hmm. And when we keep in, in mind that what we want to do is not just for us, mm-hmm. but what we want to do is provide some type of example, mm-hmm. provide some type of encouragement for others the women who may have some type of the same type of things that we've gone through Mm -hmm. and know that they can do that. So one of my guiding forces for going back to school for my doctor when Mm -hmm. I was in my 50s Mm -hmm. was that I want to show somebody somewhere maybe that I'll never meet or our paths will never cross directly that you can have a goal in your 30s and complete it in your 50s. Mm -hmm. You can have a goal in your 50s and complete it in your 60s. -hmm. It's not when you complete it, it's the fact that you do complete it. And so it was that. It was more challenging uh, later on in life. But then I looked at it from the perspective, I have more experience. Mm -hmm. So what I had in my 40s and uh, my 30s, I was much more enlightened in my Mm -hmm. 50s Mm -hmm. and in my 60s. -hmm. So I brought to the table those experiences, Mm -hmm. those trials, Mm -hmm. those triumphs, Mm -hmm. those victories, those failures, Mm -hmm. those successes, Mm -hmm. those not so good things. I brought all of that to the table. Mm -hmm. So in reading a book or compiling a paper or looking at a particular situation or having a project with a group Mm -hmm. or discussion from a lecture from a professor, I brought some things to the table at 50 Mm -hmm. that I could have never brought at 30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so again, we see God's hand in everything we do. So nothing in your life, ladies, is 
is ever lost. Mm -hmm. Nothing in your life is never without some type of purpose. Mm -hmm. That's good. So we're going to take a short break, and I have to remember to take a break because <laughs> Copas and I can talk forever. Yes. So I, I want to take a short break, and when we come back, I wanted to talk a little bit about her new book, um, which is from her thesis, mm -hmm. and she's going to talk more about it. It is an excellent book, Soaring Above the Ceiling. Mm -hmm. Listen, you have got to get this book. Mm -hmm. If you are a female leader, whether you're in uh, the church or in the marketplace, this is the book that you want to have for 2015 in your mm -hmm. library. So when we come back from this short break, we're going to talk a little bit more about the book. Stay tuned.
are back. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. So I want to talk a little bit about this new book, Co-Pastor, that mm-hmm. I thoroughly enjoyed. And you know, Thank both you. of us are avid readers. Right, right, right. So I read this book in one setting. Oh, I just couldn't put it down. This, yeah. was, this was my reading during one of my exercise, um, you know, regimens. Mm-hmm. And I just so, I was so thoroughly blessed by the book. Mm -hmm. So I want you to talk a little bit about it, how you developed it, how Mm -hmm. it came to be. Mm -hmm. And I already know why the subject is so important to Mm -hmm. you, but talk a little bit about it. Soaring above the ceiling, developing successful, Mm -hmm. not just female leaders, successful female leaders. Um, Well, the book is really a composite, like you said, of my final project at Fuller. Mm -hmm. And when I decided to do some work with a doctoral program, I I went through a lot of the the programs that were offered through many universities. Mm -hmm. And Fuller just struck me because the particular track that I was doing and looking into Mm -hmm. dealt with integrity in the pulpit Mm -hmm. and contemporizing the gospel for 21st century preaching. Mm -hmm. And so from that, we that whole piece we spun into how does that relate to females mm-hmm. who are uh, cont- who are preaching women now of course our our, our venue has expanded mm-hmm. when female preachers started out in the late 50s, early 60s, we Mm -hmm. did not have the platforms Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. we have now. There were not a lot of mentors. There were not a lot of coaches. Mm -hmm. And so some of us, we stumbled through Mm -hmm. um, those types of venues and took all the criticism, but that's good because pioneers always have to do, always we always have to handle the criticism. The trailblazers are good because they blaze the trail. Thank God for the trailblazers. Yes, (laughs) indeed. Yes, indeed. And so when I when when I was uh, looking at what my final project would be through that uh, program at Fuller, I wanted to do something that would create a platform that would in- inspire and encourage women mm-hmm. to not only lead but to lead with a a, a, a certain segment or a certain amount of success. Mm-hmm. And success looks different for for right. all of us, mm-hmm. but success does have its pinnacle, mm-hmm. so that when we we are successful, we can see that, we mm-hmm. can reach that, and others can appreciate our success. Mm-hmm. So in doing that, I wanted to b- develop some strategies, some principles that I had learned some through the bitter and sweet of my walk with the Lord, mm-hmm. with my uh, emerging into a female leader, mm-hmm. both the sacred and secular, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which can pose two different uh, uh, platforms. Absolutely. But in some way, kind of merged them together. So when we started the research for the project, you always need a good team. You don't need a whole yes. lot, but you need a couple yes. of good teams. Absolutely. Right? You know, I got a couple of those, uh, a couple of my goddaughters that can Google anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, they can find stuff in three <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I said, come, 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 come. Yes. And so I developed a good team, and we began to research. We read, uh, the program required us to read some 300 books mm-hmm. over the, the seven years or so that I was in the doctoral program. And um, we did both sacred and secular. Mm-hmm. We looked at CEOs of, of companies. We looked at women who started their uh, their own businesses who became mm-hmm. successful. We looked at women who were received organizational success through inheritances. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we looked at women in the church. Mm-hmm. And so uh, what the, uh, the publisher did was it took some snippets mm-hmm. from the entire project and we put it in the form of a book. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we, we dealt with the early formation mm-hmm. of especially African American female leaders mm-hmm. and and so that that adage that you know they're just starting off or they just started out a few years ago which is totally mm-hmm. fabricated mm-hmm. um there were female leaders very early on mm-hmm. in that whole movement that started the the actual denominational mm-hmm. principles mm-hmm. that emerged into uh, the AME Church, the AME Zion Church, mm-hmm. the Baptist Church, the Holiness Church, the Pentecostal mm-hmm. Church, the Apostolic Church, that whole formation. There were women who were very much a part of that. It's mm-hmm. like the Civil Rights Movement mm-hmm. and other movements, mm-hmm. that Azusa Street movement. Yes. When we hear so much about the male components that did it, but actually there were females that really undergirded mm-hmm. and walked very very strongly with them. Mm-hmm. So we looked at all that and we began to look at some of the the 
these successes, some of these struggles, mm-hmm. if you will, mm-hmm. and some of the uh, other successes they had, and what kept them, what motivated them, what made them stay to or stick to it <laughs> right. when they wasn't getting the paychecks. Mm-hmm. They weren't getting the honorariums, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. They were getting a hamburger or, or thank you very much. Thank you for your prayer life. God bless you. Right. And, you know, there was there were there seemingly were no um, uh, re- uh, uh, repercussions that were, were worthy of what right. they were doing. We looked at all that. And then um, we began to put together, again, some principles and things. So we went all the way back. And then we began to develop the principles. We began to develop some strategies mm-hmm. that will that worked in both secular and sacred. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we did that and we looked at how how stability, how stammer, mm-hmm. and how what I call just plain relentless yes. guts yes. will say, okay, yes. you guys don't ever have to appreciate me. <laughs> I'm going to appreciate myself. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't think I bring anything to the table, try to do it without me. Right. Try to do it without Try me it. and see how successful you would be. Uh-huh. And we did it without hopingly, and, and the book did it, without the bitterness. Right. Some women have achieved, especially in the religious sector, some success, but there's a tinge mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of bitterness. Mm-hmm. And we don't we don't want to approach anything that we do with the bitterness right. because bitterness is has a way of eating away mm-hmm. at all the good that you do. Absolutely. And it does begin to seep out and so it it shows up in many different mm-hmm. forms. So we mm-hmm. I didn't want to be do it bitterly. So we took it and we just developed it into principles, into strategies that say you can do what you can do. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the the trick of the trade is we all can't do it the same way. Right, right. And that's the thing to remember, that if we lead, we don't all lead the same way. There are many types of leaders. There are many types of techniques mm-hmm. that you can enhance yourself as a leader. Mm-hmm. But there are certain things that have to be formatted there mm-hmm. that will allow you to lead. For example... You can't lead and say, okay, I'm the leader. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. Leaders, to me, most successful leaders know how to delegate authority, Mm -hmm. to push back, Mm -hmm. and not be intimidated Mm -hmm. by the area that they may not be as formed in mm-hmm. and allow somebody else to form that with them. Mm-hmm. You are successful leaders and it's very crucial for women cannot take all the credit. Right. You cannot take the credit mm-hmm. for something you did not do. Absolutely. Or something someone helped you do. So mm-hmm. we have to begin to formulate ourselves and say we are successful because of this. Mm-hmm. I was able to this because of this. Right. I achieved this because of this. Mm-hmm. Because there was someone who did the research for me. There was Absolutely. someone who helped me. I was able to form this sermon together and get this idea because I heard something mm-hmm. from Nicole or I heard mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. from Sister Betty mm-hmm. or Grandma told me this and, right. and the Lord brought it back to my memory as I was studying Mary and mm-hmm. Martha mm-hmm. or as I was studying uh, Naomi mm-hmm. and Ruth. This is what I gleaned from that or my relationship with my daughter mm-hmm. or my relationship with my mother. Mm-hmm. And if we don't have relationship with other women, you're not going to be successful successful in leading women. And so mm-hmm. relationship is the key That's for successful powerful. leadership. <laughs> mm-hmm. You must be able to form strong mm-hmm. relationships and not be intimidated by the gifts and talents and abilities mm-hmm. of other women. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes we get territorial. Mm-hmm. And because we've had a measure of success, Mm -hmm. we don't want anybody to interfere that. Mm -hmm. But my old adage comes from that book uh, that Jim Collins wrote, Mm -hmm. that good is the enemy Mm -hmm. of great. Mm -hmm. And his book is Good to Great. So if Mm -hmm. you want to achieve greatness, you cannot remain good. Mm -hmm. And then you have to... Uh, come to the the realization of the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody's not going to agree with me, but it's been proven more than once we live in a man's world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And that's a reality. We live in a man's mm-hmm. world. Now, you can get upset with me. You can email Elder Nicole. Don't email me, Elder Nicole. <laughs> and tell her that I am tired of co-pastor. I don't know what she's talking about. This is 21st century. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This is a man's world. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. somewhere in your leadership techniques and strategies, you're going to have to get along with men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, you don't have to agree with them. Right. But you got to get along with them. And so that's where we develop the title, Soaring Above the Ceiling. Mm -hmm. Is there a glass Mm -hmm. ceiling? Mm -hmm. Is there some differences between how women leaders are respected and received Mm -hmm. and how male leaders are respected Mm -hmm. and received? Mm -hmm. And the book goes into that. There are some differences. Mm -hmm. No matter how good we may be, there are some differences. And what we learned as we put the book together is that most of our challenges did not come from males. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, if that ain't a hallelujah, you can't see me. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it was from the female Absolutely. sector. Absolutely. For whatever reasons, mm-hmm. the jealousy, the, the intimidation mm-hmm. we found was from more female mm-hmm. uh, factors than men. And so we developed all that. And we concluded at the end, um, there is a glass ceiling. Mm-hmm. Will we ever break it? Mm-hmm. I doubt it. Mm -hmm. Can Mm -hmm. we crack it? Most certainly. Absolutely. We can make it easier for the girls who have to come behind Mm -hmm. us. Absolutely. And that is the crust of being successful as a female leader. What trails, what what drippings do you you leave behind? Um, You all you you may never see a mouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You may never see a mouse. What makes you know that there is a mouse somewhere in your house is a mouse always leaves drippings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There are always drops. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can always see mm-hmm. where the mouse has been. Mm-hmm. And so as female leaders to be successful, we want to be sure that we leave some drippings, mm-hmm. that we leave some some tidbits that other women, other ladies can follow us and say, okay, don't do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's not going to help your cause. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's not do it that way mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because that's going to hinder you. Yes. Let's not say that, mm-hmm. even if though you feel like saying that, mm-hmm. and you probably have the right have to the say right. that, mm-hmm. but is that going to help you mm-hmm. in the long run? Mm-hmm. And that's where we are. Mm-hmm. We want to lead successfully, not just for today, mm-hmm. but for tomorrow. Yeah. We want to make it easier for our daughters, mm-hmm. easier for our granddaughters, mm-hmm. and certainly easier for other sisters of many different ethnic groups yes. and cultures because some things are the same across the board. Absolutely. And so the book kind of des- uh, deals with things like that. We also looked at our particular denomination. Mm-hmm which hails uh, from the the flag point that they've always accepted women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's that's true and not true. They've always accepted women in certain positions, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. in certain postures. Mm-hmm. And so we looked at our organization um, and uh, began to conclude that though we were one of the earlier denominations to uh, sanction women, it took us a long time to come to the fact that women can become bishops Mm -hmm. or or women can lead in that type of a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And again, it comes from an understanding of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So when they say that that, that, that one that they love, well, Paul told Timothy, Mm -hmm. you you have to be the (laughs) husband (laughs) of one wife or you ought to be Mm silent. Okay, well, Paul was writing to a male. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, duh, you, you <laughs> need to be the husband of one wife. He wasn't mm-hmm. writing to a sister. He wasn't writing to a female. Mm-hmm. Or the whole conversation would have changed. Right. He was writing to his son in the gospel. Mm-hmm. He never said that God said this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. never said that Jesus said this. He was Jewish by culture. Mm-hmm. Jewish women by culture mm-hmm. were more dorsal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they were not. But you take those women, those Gentile girls, are you kidding me? Right. They were queen. <laughs> they ran the show yes. when the queen of, queen Sheba, of Sheba came to see Solomon. Uh-huh. Baby, the girl stepped in there and she was not empty handed. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I brought for you. Yes. Now let's talk. Uh-huh, you know? uh-huh, so uh-huh. the Gentile women had a whole different perspective mm-hmm. about leadership. Mm-hmm. And so we brought those kinds of elements in to set in place that we can be successful. Mm-hmm. We can leave the drippings. Mm-hmm. And long after our voices are hushed, mm-hmm. women can build upon 
what we have lived mm -hmm. and what we brought to the table. Listen, you owe it to yourself <laughs> to get this book. Now, uh, I want co-pastor to talk a little bit about mentoring. You touched on that. Mm -hmm. Talk about the importance of it mm -hmm. and some of the recommendations or, um, you know, strategies that one might go through to mm -hmm. select a mentor. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, um, before we came into a mentor-mentee relationship, I had actually talked with um, Reverend Dr. Ann Leitner Fuller okay. at the Hamptons Ministers Conference. And it was so funny because I said, well, you know, I'm thinking about I need a mentor. And she says to me, well, the Lord said that your mentor is closer than you think. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, she's in Baltimore, uh -huh. you know. So I get back home right on um, <laughs> off of Rhode Island Avenue. And the Lord is like, yeah, duh, right down the street, mm -hmm. right down the street. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I'm just so grateful and thankful uh, for our relationship Absolutely. and just all that you've imparted into my life. Uh, but talk about the importance of it, because I know on many occasions, you know, when I've thought about something, when you said some of the things you want to say, but you don't say, mm -hmm. I know for me, I've had that opportunity to say, okay, now what do you think about this? And mm -hmm. you're like, no, nope, mm -hmm. that is not right. Mm -hmm. That is not good. So uh, I'm so thankful to God for that. But talk a little bit about that. Okay. I, th I think mentorship, of course, is, is paramount for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 it serves as a catalyst for us to begin to develop our gifts and talents mm -hmm. and abilities. I think um, in order to be a successful mentor, you have to love who it is you're mentoring. Mm -hmm. Um, if you mentor people and you do not mentor them out of love, mm -hmm. then they can they can pick up those vibes. Mm -hmm. Because mentoring doesn't mean that I'm going to agree with right. everything you bring to the table or everything that you want to do. I remember when I was mentoring a young woman out of Howard, and uh, she's a wonderful writer, and she had this opportunity to write for the secular magazine. Mm -hmm. But the particular magazine that she they, they wanted this particular religious column, you know, after a while they just, you know, it's like all the rappers, they done cussed all year long, right. but they get they get a global, I want to thank God, uh -huh, for, uh -huh, I, uh -huh. I want to thank God for giving me this opportunity, but you mm -hmm. ain't thanked him all along, you done cracked, smoked, drank right. liquor, but I want to thank God, <laughs> you know, so. Um, but uh, it was it was not a, a, it was not to me, and it was not, worthy mm -hmm. of what she what she could bring to the table and um and she was struggling through grad school the, the money was mm -hmm, going to be good mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and of course you know the enemy baits the carrot yes, you know he takes yes. you know he he takes it and he dangles the carrot mm -hmm. and you say well I can do this you know this is mm -hmm. not going to affect me this is going to mm -hmm. give me this this is God mm -hmm. God is mm -hmm. leading me to do this he's going <laughs> to make this way yes, and I'm yes. going to be financially Steady and stuff, and so I, you know, I let her get through talking, and she went through all this about how 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 it was going to help her, mm -hmm. da, da, da. and I said to her at the end, I said, now when history rec records mm. who you are, mm -hmm. and people go back and read your early formative years of writing, mm -hmm. is this what you want in your mm -hmm. biographical sketch? Mm -hmm. Would you want this magazine listed? And of course, she sat back in the chair like, "I, you did not do that to me. <laughs> you did not yes, do. Yes. I know you just didn't sit here and bust me up, smiling at me." Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. And uh, so I said, "Don't do it. Yeah, don't mm -hmm. do it, mm -hmm. because some things have implications and they have long-term damage, mm -hmm. and you can't do damage control mm -hmm. on something that you've already." done mm. you can do damage control on something you're doing mm -hmm. or something that you will do mm -hmm. but if you've already done it mm -hmm. you can't do damage control mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so we taught from that and so after that she got the opportunity to write for the african pulpit digest mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and those many opportunities that opened for her mm -hmm. and so sometimes it's just waiting out it's just mm -hmm. waiting out mm -hmm. and listening to that mentor and realizing that that mentor has your best interests mm -hmm. in heart mm -hmm. and that she's not going to say anything mm -hmm. that she feels is going to damage you mm -hmm. or allow you to go in any 
area or venture into any venue mm -hmm. that ultimately will not add to your success. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful who you choose as right. a mentor. Yeah. You know, yeah. sometimes we choose mentor because I want to do what she does. I want to be like her. And I tell my mentees, I don't want you to be like me. Mm -hmm. I want you to be better than me. Mm -hmm. I want you to go further than mm -hmm. me. I want you to do those things that I didn't do. Mm -hmm. I want you to accomplish those things that I didn't accomplish. I'm looking at you to be the next whatever, mm -hmm. whoever. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to push you to do that. And so when you, you look for mentors, you want to look for someone of the mm -hmm. same sorts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't want to find, if you're a preacher, then you need to preach uh, someone who's preaching. Mm -hmm. You can't have a mentor from from somebody who's who's teaching children's right. church. <laughs> not that it's wrong to teach right. children's church, yes. but that's not yes. what you're doing. Yes. So you need someone of the same sort mm -hmm. so that there can be some connection mm -hmm. in where you're going and mm -hmm. what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm and that she can open those pathways or enlighten you on mm -hmm. those type of uh, situations. Mm -hmm. And so you want to do that. That's the first thing. You want to certainly pick a mentor that has proven to be one who is not intimidated mm -hmm. by the gifts and talents of those that she mentors. Right. And so you don't want anybody who wants to keep you on their level. Mm. That's powerful. You want someone who wants to say, no, you can go there. Mm -hmm. Even if I never get there mm -hmm. or even if I've been there, mm -hmm. I want you to come here with me. Mm -hmm. And so that there is that kind of camaraderie mm -hmm. that you believe that this person is going to help you to achieve, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And they can see in you what you can't see in yourself, mm -hmm. you know. Jesus had Peter at 12, but Peter, James, and John receive a different type of mentorship mm -hmm. from them, mm -hmm. from him. Mm -hmm. And that's because because he knew mm -hmm. that they would pay a different price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They would pay a different price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so your mentor has to be wise enough. Mm -hmm. There has to be times of conversation. Mm -hmm. And we spend many hours in conversation. Mm -hmm. There has mm -hmm. to be times when you feel that that mentor is praying for you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. both with you and then when you're apart. Mm -hmm. And so that when you come together, you can sense at that moment when you're in each other's presence mm -hmm. that th this 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 is good. This mm -hmm. is fine. Mm -hmm. So you just don't want to pick a mentor because you want to do that or you want to be that. You want to pick a mentor that has something to offer you. Mm -hmm. In other words, you want to pick a mentor that knows that you have some 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 deficits. Mm -hmm. You you mm -hmm. have some you have some rough edges, mm -hmm. and allow her the opportunity through the help of God mm -hmm. to begin to design you into that formative wonderful jewel mm -hmm. that God has for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you told me one of those sessions to become this beautiful tapestry of all <laughs> these wonderful <laughs> colors and I just wanted to get up and start swinging like I don't want to hear that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I appreciate the, the mentoring and you know, one of the things I know that is key is you know, when you talk about the mentor doesn't always agree with you, uh, and the mentor has to be able to say, you know, yes means yes and no means mm -hmm. no. Um, I immediately thought about when I called you about this teaching position mm -hmm. and, you know, was just kind of going back and forth about it. And some of the points that you made, I hadn't even thought about. Mm -hmm. And so that's also very important in mentoring. You know, the mentor has to be able to see it from a different perspective mm -hmm. and be able to share that perspective. And you have to respond to mm -hmm. to that mm -hmm. to that um, information that, that they are giving you. So we, you know, our time, of course, is running out. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, we need more time oh. to talk. Um, so um, you're going to be preaching this week. At the yes. New Year's Revival. So we are super excited. Oh, yes. I've been advertising it on the show. Wow, thank you. Um, and so, of course, we're always praying for you, lifting you up, and so excited about this. But before we wrap up, I just wanted to give you the opportunity to uh, share a little bit about what's in your heart for the ladies for this year, um, to just kind of give us a last word uh, as we wrap up our time together uh, to get us and keep us focused and mm -hmm. motivated. Okay. Oh, that's great. Um, this is my year to be inspired. Mm -hmm. And so um, 2014 has expired. And I think sometimes as we uh, enter new seasons, new, new years, or new opportunities, we tend to bring a lot of the baggage, sometimes knowingly and sometimes unknowingly. But what I think we need to do and what I've done for this year, I have put, I've closed 2014. Mm -hmm. Whether it had 
all the good, all the bad, all the ugly, it's over. Mm -hmm. It's done. <laughs> it is expired. Yes. It is so dead. Mm -hmm. It is so final. <laughs> it is I've, give, I've given it the last rites. I've said ashes to ashes, <laughs> yes, dust to it's dust. Done. I've laid the flowers. I've cut down. I, it's over. Mm -hmm. And I'm inspired. Mm -hmm. This is my year to be inspired. So I want the ladies who are listening, I want you to take that. I want you to put it in your journal. Mm -hmm. I want you to write it like you did those lines years ago. So I'm telling my age, years ago when we wrote lines, <laughs> I will not. So you go, yes, I, I, yes, I, yes. will, 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 not, not, not. Talk, talk, talk in, in, in class, okay? <laughs> I want you to get a journal, do two or three pages, inspired, inspired, yes. inspired. This is our year to be inspired. Mm -hmm. And what, it, what the difference between inspiration and motivation is that motivation comes from external forces. Mm -hmm. When we're motivated, we're motivated from outside of ourselves. Something has come, something is mm -hmm. happening, something mm -hmm. is going on that motivates us, that gives us energy, that gives mm -hmm. us strength, that, or whatever, whatever. But inspiration comes from inside. Mm -hmm. It's internal. So that this year, what you become, how you develop, what you achieve, well, how the Lord uses you, how the Spirit speaks to you, mm -hmm. your dreams, your visions, your ideas are all coming from you. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing about it, Nicole, is when it comes from you, you will set a plan. You will mm -hmm. set a strategy. You will come up with a technique. Mm -hmm. You will get it done. Mm -hmm. Because we're women that can get the job done. So all mm -hmm. you have to do is keep that inspiration in there. Mm -hmm. And whether it happens in February or it doesn't happen till October, mm -hmm. you're going to get that job done. Mm -hmm. So be inspired let it come from deep down within you mm -hmm. hold yourself accountable mm -hmm. to that inspiration and know that you and God can get anything done <laughs> nothing is yes. impossible mm -hmm. when God is with us yes yes Excellent. Listen, <laughs> you want to join us this week for our New Year's Revival. Yeah. We are super excited. And Co-Pastor, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so, listen, thank you for joining the Nicole Mason Show. want to give a shout out to my partners, uh, Rihanna Wilkes, my personal makeup artist. I love her, love her, love her. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tanya Young, who keeps my hair flowing. Yeah. Angela Burnside, my graphic artist. Uh, Anthony Robinson, my photographer. Listen, stay tuned next week, same time, same place, because you never know who you're going to meet on the Nicole Mason Show. God bless you. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Co-Pastor. My pleasure. <laughs> stay inspired. <laughs> <laughs>